Hey, what's up, folks? We're going to talk a little bit about a web dev tool, a, a build tool called Brunch. I've used every web build tool and task runner, I think, that exists. I've used Grunt. I've used Gulp. I've used NPM scripts, which is generally what I've been using of late. I've tried Webpack. I ran away. Uh, and I just ran across an article about Brunch, particularly how to use it with Vue. And I figured I'd give it a whirl because I've got some, well, let's see here, more Drupal. Oof, look at all this. We'll make it a little, a little prettier. See all this start and various watch and build and just other commands and just all this stuff going on forever? That's what I was doing with NPM scripts eventually to get everything I needed done, done. And it just got hard to manage and kind of buggy. So I was going to get into Webpack and every time I try Webpack, I, it just, it's, I know I'm wrong about this because everyone really seems to love Webpack. But it's just not for me. It's everything about it just it makes me tear my hair up. But Brunch is not like that. I know how to quit Vim. So let's go, we're in this Brunch folder, show you basically what this looks like. And here's Brunch brunch.io and it's it's tagline is uh, seeing build tools in your nightmares and I think a lot of web developers are you can end up with build scripts that are uh, hundreds of lines of code now just doing crap all over the place and a lot of ways they might be more complicated than the app you're trying to build and it, it's just crazy making brunch is an opinionated build tool but its opinions are good because they seem to match mine and that's how I tell whether it's a good opinionated build tool or not that's my only criteria and everything they did is is smart it's either what I would have done or or what I would have done it have been smart enough to think of doing it that way so what does this look like I just used a sample project and brunch is just a node thing like all the good things in life so your package.json look kind of like this. And to do view and brunch, all you really need is view and brunch and view brunch, those three packages. What brunch does is detects what you have installed and just uses it. You don't have to especially configure anything unless you need to change the defaults a bit. So like I have brunch view running to uh, uh, it's the word that's not compile but it's kind of like compile my view stuff I don't have anything configuration written about view it just knows brunch says hey view brunch is here so I'm gonna do my view stuff and that's how it does everything it's really really smart so like those NPM scripts we had before now I just have two doing pretty much all the stuff I was doing before I've got a server. Brunch comes with its own server, so you can see your stuff. And Brunch build builds it if you give it this production option. It automatically does CSS and uh, JS minification and that kind of stuff for you. Just by specifying production, you don't have to do anything else. It's really, really smart. So. I've got Brunch doing everything I need to do for the quality of life because that project's about to sock me in the face in a week or so. What I need to do for it is it needs to be able to do view, needs to be able to do post CSS, image minification, uh, handlebars uh, processing, and Babel, of course. And it uh, also needs to do 
uh, SW Precache to make it a progressive web app. So I've just set up a simple brutch app that does all of those things with just these dependencies. So we need to get out of here. We'll just go edit brunch config. This is the brunch configuration file. And this is actually a very lengthy one. You find normally these brunch configuration files are quite small because brunch is very smart about what it does. So doing a couple things here that I haven't done before that I saw brunch was doing in some examples and it's really smart. I'm breaking up my JavaScript and uh, my CSS into vendor CSS like uh, say what's a material design light or bootstrap and the CSS I wrote and same thing with JavaScript that does a couple neat things for you one is it uh, if you have multiple web pages that share a common vendor set of stuff and some just some stuff for that page as well you can very easily separate those things out so that vendor stuff gets cached. You don't have to reload that every time. But the neat thing it does about for you when you're developing is when you change your code and it recompiles your view and all of your Babel and all your stuff, the vendor stuff's already compiled. Unless you change the vendor dependency, that doesn't have to be compiled again. So it's super, super fast. So it's doing that with CSS and JS under this npm gives you an option to include some specific stuff from like your node modules and here i'm clearing uh, i'm including material design light css file and down here you have the plugins and i've got a babel plugin for brunch and all i'm doing with that is i have the the env preset so which is kind of like auto prefixer for babel so i just tell it get what you need for the last two browser versions. Post CSS is using CSS next and I'm similarly telling it just get the last two browser versions and handlebars I'm using in the quality of life project so people put stuff about their site in a configuration and then it writes it out to the HTML so it looks more like their site they don't have to go edit that HTML by hand. So it's doing a little handlebar stuff here and here I'm giving it some data and I'm, this little option tells it not to include uh, uh, the handlebars compiler library because I don't really need that and SW Precache for your progressive web app I'm just telling it to strip out public and get everything in there and I'll make our service worker file so this is 49 lines of code doing image minification, which, by the way, I didn't specify anything at all because it's just smart enough to do that, along with uh, a PWA precache uh, or your service worker precache, uh, handlebars, post CSS, view, Babel, all your JavaScript includes stuff, all that stuff in this tiny little bit of code. So now if I go run this I can just go you can go npm instead of yarn if that's your bag and I run start and it's going to start up a server on a port and right now this is just doing the very simple stuff this little bit of text up here is coming from a handlebars template so I can make sure that's working and this is a view component so I can make sure that's working and that is it that is all you have to do and it's off and running your stuff and to build we're just going to yarn run build and what it has that build it has that production tag what that tells it when it builds it it is automatically minifying your CSS and JavaScript and because we have the image processor image min extension on there the Image min brunch, which uses image optim, which is like PNG, JPEG, GIF, and SVG. It's smart enough to know, don't do that image processing when you're just doing a regular build, like when you're watching, because that takes a long time. It knows to only do that when you have that production flag when you're building. Same thing with your JavaScript and CSS minification. So it's smart enough to know all by itself not to do the really time-consuming crap when you're just trying to develop. Yeah. Brunch 
by itself, its server doesn't do the auto preload or the auto reload thing when you're developing. There's an auto reload brunch plugin. Again, I just include it. I didn't have to include any kind of configuration for that in that brunch configuration file. Brunch just looks and says, I've got this auto reload plugin. I'm going to use that now. That's, that's, how, that's how cool it is. So Brunch is really, really cool. There's only a couple little wrinkles I ran into that you might want to know about. First, we'll go back and look at that package again. When Brunch starts a server, it starts it so only local host has access to that site. You can't see it from outside that machine, which is fine for most people, but I tend to remotely connect to my home machine and then I have holes burrowed out through my firewall so I can edit locally in Vim on this machine and then see it on a browser back on the machine where I'm at. So by giving it this network flag, it actually opens it so it's open to machines beyond your local machine it's running on. So you need that if you if you work like I do that way. What else? There's a couple little minor things. Maybe in the config file is where I ran into stuff. Ah. Let's see. Ah, one thing that's interesting with your CSS, uh, this is a, another little wrinkle. By default, it basically compiles anything you put into your app folder. So if you're the kind of developer that has like index.html, index2.html, index3.html, index, oh my god, I can't believe I have four of these, four.html, if that's how you develop, it's going to compile all those into your, your production folder, even though you're not specifically pointing to it because it compiles everything. So keep your folder clean, which was, I mean, git, that, that shouldn't be too hard anymore. Uh, the other thing is with CSS, I was using CSS, the post CSS import plugin for my main CSS to pull other things in. It will actually just take every CSS file you have and jam them together for you. You don't have to do any kind of importing. Uh, that's good and bad. It's, it's good in that it's, it's less work for you. It's bad if, that if you've written some sloppy CSS so you've set something three times and you're relying on that very last one to be the the winner well you're in a little bit of trouble because uh it's not necessarily coming in that order anymore there's an order parameter you can put in with uh your file lists under your files so it will go in a certain order but I'd advise you for something like CSS just to just to write clean code, and by separating the vendor stuff from your CSS and loading from your stuff and loading your stuff second, you're automatically going to be overwriting the vendor stuff. So that's not going to sneak around and bite you in the ass. That's a little bit of how it compiles. You need to be a little careful there. Uh, one thing I ran in, into if you use handlebars is coming up with this error. And for Babel, I had to tell it just ignore node modules because it's doing something weird to handlebars. And then that kind of fixed that. And only one other thing I can think of. I'll show you what that app folder looks like. Assets just get copied over. This is our, uh, our I don't even need this anymore. This is your handlebar file. And these images just get copied over and optimized if you're doing a production build. But one thing, we'll go over here. You can see right here is where I'm doing my handlebar stuff and there's where I'm putting in a view component. You load your scripts and then you additionally load this. The way Brunch puts its JavaScript together, it wraps it in uh, this, whatever your main file is called here, mine is called main. And since my file I put into a JavaScript subfolder just to keep things clean, I do this require JS main. And then that 
runs the main stuff and which is a little it's fine it's just something to be aware of and you'll see this in all the examples you'll need to load your javascript files and then load this main uh require which will get translated by babel and, and everything will get everything will work itself out that's about it those are the only tricky things i ran into and it's just really nice and when i start working on quality of life which with any luck will actually ship the end of next month they're probably teasing me but uh there's some inkling that it might I'm going to be switching over to brunch and hopefully that will just rock. Anyway, that's brunch. It also, uh, the article I was reading was showing it actually compiled everything and made slightly smaller files in Webpack. Uh, but that's one of those your mileage may vary sort of things. Uh, those, those kinds of uh, you might get eight other different libraries in your project and all of a sudden it's reversed. Uh, that, that's one of those iffy things. But I have noticed when it when Brunch compiles stuff on the fly, uh, when you're doing development work, it's extremely quick. And it also makes source maps automatically. You notice I didn't have any source map code in there. It just automatically makes your source maps because source maps are a smart thing to do. And it does do incremental builds when you're building which also helps it go very fast so i really like this brunch thing uh, i advise you to check it out if you're like me you like to see you know simple projects set up in it so you know how it works if you go to the skeletons on their site there's just a skeleton app for anything you can think of view bower express live script wisp i don't even know what that is just jade less anything you can think of there's a little github uh, template project where you can see exactly how to set that up and get it working so i really like brunch i think this is being to become my new web build tool uh like i said i threw everything that quality of life does on it with the exception of building the data which is just weird and that that always has to be handled separately from handlebars, templates to uh, service worker precache, image processing, post CSS, view, Babel, all that crap. And it just works so easy and good. Brunch is really great. So if you're looking for a build tool for your next project, I would give Brunch a try. I'd never heard of it until I saw... Uh, uh, let's see if I can find that so I can give him some credit. It was on viewdevelopers.com, which I'd never heard of that either. Uh, which doesn't, that just means I'm unpopular, it doesn't mean they're not popular. Uh, and I had a thing on Vue.js and Brunch, and that's where I first learned about Brunch in Vue.js. And it's here's an example of your Webpack config for what he's doing a sample project was just some view and there's brunch and that's that, that I, I like these I, I like how how these are different anyway i hope you find that useful i will catch you later bye bye